Hello, welcome back to my presentation. This is the second lecture of my series of presentations, which we will be going through very soon. So, uh, we are continuing again uh, the same topic introduction to crop growth simulation modeling. Uh, in this, uh, you'll get to know more uh, details about the crop growth simulation models. As you know, crop simulation models integrate current scientific knowledge from different disciplines including crop physiology, plant breeding, agronomy, agrometallurgy, soil physics, soil science, pathology, and etology, depending upon the types of models you are using. And um, in my earlier presentation also, I did mention about uh, this uh, multidisciplinary approaches in uh, development of uh, crop simulation models. So, if you look at the crop simulation models, so the simplest way is the simple representation of a crop. That means its development and the progress to maturity from emergence. So, if you look at uh, this uh, figure, if you see the Zadox growth scales for wheat, cereal crop. So, Zadox growth scale is a 0 to 99 scale of development that is recognized internationally for research, advisory work, and farm practice, particularly to time the application of chemicals and fertilizers. And the crop models are the tools of system research which help in solving problems related to crop production. So if you, just now you saw about a cereal crops, if you look at the legume, so I'm giving you, I'm showing you the example of soybean where you can see the soybean growth stages. And these growth stages of different used use today was first reported by fur and co-workers. They divide plant development to vegetative V and reproductive R stages. You can see the developmental growth stages of soybean in the vegetative. It is V1 to V6, though V6 is not mentioned here. V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, V6. And V1 is the first opening of the trifoliate completely. And V2, you can see subsequently two trifoliates open completely. V3, where you can see three. And if you move to the reproductive stage, the beginning of reproductive stage, the R1, so beginning of the flowering, we can see. Similarly, R6 seed produced, R7 is the physiological maturity, and R8 the harvested maturity. So, uh, if you look at the physiological maturity, the maturity to the plant little dies, so the door it looks green, but actually physiologically it is dead. So, it doesn't do any photosynthesis, it doesn't produce any biomass, and it is physiologically dead. So um, this is about the uh, legume crop and different stages of development of the crop. So if you look at the crop growth simulation models, actually they are computer software programs under there. And what they do actually, they simulate daily growth stages. Means every day you'll get how much biomass is produced uh, or how, and the yield of the crop. Then development from emergence, flowering, harvesting of different crops like wheat, maize, soybean, chickpea, you name a crop, if they are available in that crop model, a particular crop model, then you are able to simulate the development of different stages. Then have been reported over the last, or been developed over the last 40 years, as you know, it's not a matter of um, a few years, it takes a lot of time to develop a model and have reached a high degree of maturity so that they can be confidently applied to support agricultural management practices. As you know, those management practices could be fertilizer applications. It may be types of fertilizer, amount of fertilizer, depth of applications, and types of applications also, and irrigation scheduling, amount of irrigation applied, and types of irrigation methods of irrigation followed, crop rotation planning, etc. Then, depending upon the soil characteristics and weather conditions, the crop species, crop simulation models calculate daily biomass growth in plant organs like stems, leaves, root, then grains and tubers, as well as plant development from sowing to maturity. It also accounts important processes in soils as water and nutrient availability and movement in order to simulate crop growth and development during whole crop growing season. Advanced crop simulation models, you know, also calculate nitrogenization, leaching, denitrification, volatilization, depending upon soil reaction. Water content, nitrogen deficiency, and drought stress, and their effects on crop growth and development and yield. So, if you look at the different production levels, so most of the crop simulation models they accommodate these level production levels and. Uh, 
what are those labels and what are the production situations if you look at the level one it is the potential yield is the defining factors for potential is uh, carbon dioxide concentration in the atmosphere solar radiation temperature and cultivar features and and the cultivar features most important because the potential yield the genetic potential yield that's governed by the genetic potential of particular crop species and uh, uh, next level of production level two and the limiting factor is water so it is known as water limited um, yield uh, potential yield and it can be rain fed potential yield or irrigated potential depending upon whether your crop is rain fed or irrigated the level three of production is water or nutrient limiting factors and most of the crop simulation models they accounted these two nutrients you know apart from um, water limited and potential yield they also accommodate water and nutrients and nitrogen is most important and some models so they do accommodate phosphorus though they are not developed for the micronutrients similarly actually what you get the reduced factors are many apart from water and nutrients there are diseases pests and pollutants that affects what the farmers get at farm levels we are actually going to get the actual yield and so there is a huge difference between the potential yield and actually our aim of always the experimentation in the fields to raise the potential level which is not possible but we should try and uh, go close to as close as possible so most of the crop simulation models that are based on these concepts and what we see today actually crop models actually this is the concept of what it is embedded in the crop simulation models so when the plant grows it interacts with the soil and the atmosphere what it gets from soil soil is actually certain carbon nitrogen phosphorus and other micronutrients water balance and water soil other soil properties related to crop productions and from the atmosphere and the weather condition is the rainfall max minimum temperature and solar radiation relative humidity and um, wind speed and and the plant in interaction with soil atmosphere what it does it due to process of photosynthesis the biomass productions and growth and development happens in the plant then what it does the model the biomass partitioning root growth other plant growth and development process in the plant so based on soil plant atmosphere continuous pack as in most of the models accommodate this plant growth in interaction with soil and environment so friends uh, since we are talking about uh, crop simulation modeling then what are those advantages actually why we are going for uh, using simulation models what actually which way they help us you know they reduce the field experiment considerably and identify crop production constant for this related to nutrient or water or stress or environmental factors maybe the weather conditions or climate variability or climate change then substitute for multi location field trials to introduce a variety in different agroclimatic zones thus saving time and money in helps in maximization of production through better crop management practices they also evaluate the risk associated with soil and crop management practices they help us in, they help us in better understanding of physical and biological systems and their interactions and also it's a learning tool they also help environmental um, impact assessment so forecasting and weather risk management yield prediction the yield gap analysis then adaptation mitigation strategies in context of climate change it is possible through simulation models otherwise we are going to have many field experiments to see or the laboratory experiment to study the impact of different levels of carbon dioxide temperature and um, relative humidity or the rainfall once the models are calibrated and validated they help us in um, developing these strategies so development of ideal types and help in breeding programs so more, some of the models they are really helpful in breeding programs for different crops and just all over the world they are also using it so this is taken from the review and where you can see a large number of uh, models actually they have been used in climate change research so uh, the, i may be mentioning a few in the later slides but these models really um, been used worldwide uh, for climate change research you can see these models so next uh, i'll move to the next slides and some of the important model i'm showing it's, it's not um, quite deliberate but just to let you know that these are the well established models available worldwide so one of the most important one is desert desert is a software system for agrotechnology transfer you can find it uh, through googling you can see 
in www.desire.net then the app sim this is another agriculture production system model so app sim agriculture production system simulator and you can find it is one of the most important model uh, available worldwide for um, simulating impact of climate change and natural resource management and uh, you can see um, you can find this one in appsim.info you can go through the website and find in details and you can download this model also so similarly crop system and the most important one other important model info crop and this is developed in india and uh, from ira and this has also been used worldwide for climate change impact assessment so this is, this is just the sum of the important um, uh, aspects about crop simulation modeling in the next uh, presentation we again move forward uh, to have some important aspects of calibration and validation and um, next will be your database management and minimum data set development so thank you very much uh, for your kind consideration and looking forward to see you again bye bye